you. Not all will agree. That happens in juries as well. That's why we have appellate courts that take it out of the emotional aspect of a jury and return it to, hopefully, a dispassionate legal analysis or logical analysis of what happened. Uh, right now, businesses anywhere in the United States are allowed to refuse service to anyone as long as they don't do it in a discriminatory manner. And if you're a photographer and you don't want to take somebody's picture, they really have no right to sue you. Well, right. they just did it now Albuquerque and they lost. And they're now being sued for uh, uh, their, their lawyers. They have to pay $7,000. I heard on the radio today, down in Albuquerque. I, I'm not familiar with that decision, but that is a trial court decision. That's why we have appellate courts. Uh, to my mind, certainly, this is an appealable issue. Good. He's not paying the seven grand, is he? Well, except the fact that they're probably going to be out seven thousand. The reality is, the reality system with our with our legal system, anybody can sue anybody for anything. It's an ugly system, but guess what? In the end. If you follow the money and the economics of it, it does work better than most other legal systems that I've ever encountered. But some people lose and some people win unfairly. It does happen. Okay, what happens if those, those the photography studio loses and they have to wind up paying the legal fees? Then what? They've gone through the appellate process. Yeah. Then well, that's true, but they'll also avail themselves of another form of the legal system, and that's the bankruptcy court. Wouldn't it be easier just go to another studio and say, okay, fine, Albuquerque. It ain't the biggest city in the world, but I guarantee you there's more than one uh, photographer in there. There, there are some... Hi, you won't do it? Hi. Hey. I don't like your big bag. I'll get a, uh, a whopper. There are some people in this country that will fight over anything. And they, yeah. are good or they don't need a reason. They want to fight. And some people have this mentality of victimhood. It's happened in the uh, racial community. It's come in the gender identity community. Some people will never be happy no matter what you give them. Some people will. Most people will be happy. If we're given a level playing field, the majority of people are happy with that. But some people are still going to find a fault with that. Yeah. Okay, any more <coughs> questions? I just want to make it clear. I did vote against Prop 8, so I was against it. But aren't we basically arguing over the definition of marriage? For example, a aunt and a nephew or two cousins or a mother and a son. I mean, why can't they get married? Well, I, I'm going to pass the mic over here in just a moment, but I'd like to say I also voted no on this, but not for the obvious reason. I, as a legal scholar, did not believe that this issue rose to the level of an amendment. I didn't believe that the state had any interest in even dabbling here, that this was a religious institution and we should leave it there. But that is why I voted against it. Uh, mine is probably not the prevailing thought. Actually, ironically, it was with me. Um, when I started blogging, I caught a lot of flack for having the opinion that why should gays want to engage in marriage? It is a, a, almost strictly a religious concept that was, you know, sort of circumvented by uh, government to say, you know, this is how we're going to define our partnerships. And I don't think that was sort of, I don't think that was the intention. Um, if that was the intention, that it would have been pre-written in the Constitution, and we wouldn't be litigating this in 2009. It would have been, you know, it would have been written as such when the founders of each state, and in fact, you know, the federal Constitution went ahead and um, and, and put this down on paper. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I don't see the word as being as important to me personally as religious people but uh, I also think that religious people again based in tradition are going to say well you know civil unions were a word that that, that was a concept that we used for, for gay people and we're not gay people and we don't want to be sort of relegated we don't want to be relegated down to second class status to have everybody be second class status to have that equality and there are certain people who feel that marriage is 
despite its despite its its, its lack of legal teeth, um, they don't want to be sort of brought down to that level, quote unquote. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it too. Where you know the only equality is to sort of like take away these labels that people have been using for so long that they're just not accustomed to it and they don't want to be accustomed to it. Uh, I think the only way to sort of to sort of get through this is to phase it out in stages. Perhaps I mean I, I don't have a fully articulated thought on how we would do that. Um, I could give it some more thought, but my personal opinion when it comes to Prop 8 was actually not based on my personal preference to marry because I don't feel well. On the one hand, I feel that everybody deserves that misery. On the other hand, I feel that nobody deserves that misery. And there's your equality for you. Um, but my, my, despite my, you know, my being not a member of the, the LGBT community, but, but someone who can identify with that community, it, it wasn't personal. It was also constitutional. So I think, um, uh, maybe, maybe, actually, you, you probably have more to say about it. I mean, you probably have more personal opinion than I do. My, mine was very much nuts and bolts and constitutional, same as Michael. No, thank you, Sarah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have a personal stake in marriage. Okay, it's irrelevant to me personally. I'm, I am who I am. Uh, you know, if I if I partner with somebody, I partner with somebody. And if we want to, you know, if we want to share property, we'll draw up a legal document. You know, and if we want to have a ceremony, we'll find some lesbian with you know with smudge sticks and go out in the woods and have them have them chant some kind of deteriorato or something at us. Um, but uh, for me, yes, the 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 strongest argument there is against Prop Eight is its unconstitutionality. That is its strongest argument. It truly is unconstitutional, but. The people say, "Hey, we want marriage to be in, in you know, ensconced in our uh, in our constitution," and they got their way. Um, now, it's important for the Supreme Court to to approach that and say, "Well, you know, the people are, are nice and all that, but when it comes to upholding the state's constitution, here's what we decide," and that's the process. That's the process. People can say uh, they're legislating from the bench. Well. You know they're 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 not legislating from the from the bench. They are upholding the state constitution, and that's their job. Well, one one thing here there there are two different attacks that are available for this uh, for this issue. The first is on a statewide level. Uh, it, this is by definition not unconstitutional by the state constitution. It is a part of our constitution now. The only way to attack it is the method by which it became part of. And, and it's a little hyper-technical, but California has amendments and revisions to the Constitution. Uh, the federal Constitution only has the amendment process. In California, they view an amendment as something that changes one part of the Constitution, whereas a revision changes the entire character of the document. And I don't believe that this, and again, this is my personal opinion, that this prop changed the entire tenor of our Constitution, but merely one aspect of it. So, I, and again, it's hyper-technical on how it got there. If it's considered an amendment, it was legal. If it was considered a revision, it didn't get the required votes by the legislature first before it went to the voters. So uh, I don't think it'll win on that. I think that the only reasonable course of action is to attack this under the federal constitution as being a violation of equal protection. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You can always reamend our constitution yep. by getting it back to the voters. Given the amount of money that was spent on this the first time, I sure hope it's out of state dollars that are funding the next campaign because we don't have it here in this state anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, is there any more uh, questions tonight? Okay, I think that's it. We've uh, run over time, but thanks. Uh, excellent. Everybody, uh, thank, the, thank the speakers. did a great job. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Joey, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, Terry.